This is a video showing how a simple sizing measurement can be made in the ZetaSizer NanoSeries software. Everything in software runs on standard operating procedures, or SOPs. These can be written into the software and saved and reopened later by a user, or you can write a new SOP manually each time you make a measurement. So it can be as simple as going up to this drop-down menu, selecting your SOP, and hitting play. You would then be prompted to enter in your sample name and hit OK. You would simply insert your cell into the instrument and press start whenever you're ready and your measurement would proceed. Once the measurement is finished you will now notice that you have a record in your record view and you can display your sizing result. If you need to write a new sizing SOP you can go up to measure manual and you can write the SOP. So first we will click measurement type and change this to size. You'll notice there's a variety of different types of measurements that you can make and create but for this one we'll talk about sizing. You could enter the sample name or leave this blank so that when the user opens the SOP they will be prompted to enter their own unique sample name. You can even write instructions, such as fill the cuvette with a mil and a half a solution, check for bubbles, and insert into the instrument. If you tab down to the next um, parameter, you can enter the materials refractive index. Please note, this is not a critical um, parameter to enter if you are only looking at the intensity size distribution. If you're interested in the volume distribution or number distribution, you would want to enter in the materials refractive index. There is a small library in the software where you can select from or you can add your own to that library. These are all parameters that you can edit later if you have made a mistake. The dispersant is the next tab, which is more critical. You need to know the sample's viscosity so that you can calculate the hydrodynamic size. There's a more extensive variety of um, solvents and buffers that you can pick from in this library. You can also add your own as well. And there's a handy complex solvent builder if you're working with buffers that are complex and you would like to build in the specific additives to your buffer at different concentrations. Our calculator will increment the refractive index and viscosity for you. The next tab would be the Mark Hoenk parameters. This is something that is not critical for the measurement. This would be for calculating a molecular weight or estimating molecular weight using the dynamic light scattering hydrodynamic result. The more critical component is temperature. You need to know the temperature that you would like to measure the sample at. The system has automatic temperature control based on what you select here. The equilibration time is a time built in to make sure that the sample comes to the exact temperature of the instrument at, as the Peltier is heating and cooling the sample. Typically, you might enter between 30 seconds to a couple minutes, depending on how different of a temperature you would like to measure. For instance, if you take your sample out of a freezer and you need to measure it at a higher temperature, something like 60 C, you would probably need to build in several minutes of equilibration time for the sample to come to the same temperature as the instrument. Another critical component is the cell. There are different types of cells that you could use for sizing and all of those are listed here. If you click on some different ones you can see pictures of them and the part numbers in case you will need to order additional cells or just to verify that you're using the exact cell that's um, pictured. This is one of the standard sizing cuvettes that's polystyrene. On the measurement settings, a lot of the measurement settings you can select as automatic, so the instrument will adapt to your sample rather than you having to adapt and adjust the concentration of your sample to the instrument. Um, you can select automatic settings, or if you're a more advanced user, you can use manual settings um, if you would like to compare two different samples to each other using the exact same settings. You can do triplicate measurements, um, which I would probably recommend just to make sure that you're getting consistent data and your um, size is not trending one way or um, one direction or the other which might suggest the sample might be sedimenting or aggregating during the course of the measurement. You can also add a delay time between measurements if you like. 
There are other advanced settings in here, um, but I will leave those to a different time. On the data processing, in general purpose mode, this is the most conservative treatment of noise. There are other models that you can select here as well if you work with multimodal samples. If you're happy with this, you can save this, give it some sort of unique name, and then you can directly run that SOP, or if you would like to write more SOPs, you can continue writing SOPs. Once you would like to measure that uh, sample with the SOP, you could click Start SOP, go and select your unique name that you saved it as, enter your sample name, and click Start once you have inserted the cell. And your SOP will run. Once the SOP is complete, you'll be able to see the size uh, measurement located in your record view. If you would like to watch what happens during the course of the measurement, you can note the green text at the bottom is telling you exactly where you are in your SOP. If you go to the log sheet, you can follow this as well. You can see some of the optimization processes that go on during the, the course of the measurement. You can see how the instrument is adapting to your sample based on the count rate that it sees to get optimal data quality and the best statistics for your sample.